Greetings. Get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey exploring the world of VM appliances. To provide you with Proxmox VMs, don't limit yourself to installing Docker images into Proxmox. Not all Docker images can be successfully installed into Proxmox. Many Docker images need a fair amount of work after the installation. However, VirtualBox appliances come pre-configured and working and as OVA files. In 2007, Sun, now Oracle, gave us VirtualBox for creating our home labs, with VM appliances delivered as OVA files. We get to tap into a large amount of virtual machine appliances, OVA files. With time, things changed and don't work. However, in this video, we get this to work in Proxmox 8. Thanks to sites like turnkey.linux, we will be able to install many pre-configured server VMs, so buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the brilliance of this video. Now without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Proxmox expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a charming Dodecanese European accent, but fear not, he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. In the previous videos, we installed files using Docker Compose. Now there are some disadvantages in that. When you install the applications, you still have to configure them and get them to work. Firstly, secondly, not all applications are available as Docker Compose files. By learning how to import OVA files, we open our doors to allow us to access a large range of VMs. Take the turnkeylinux.org website and you will see there are a lot of servers that we can install. We are particularly interested in this one, GitLab, which we will install today from the OVA file. Enough said, let's get our hands dirty. There are a few instructions we need to do. Firstly, we need to open the Proxmox node shell. Now that we've opened the node shell, we can run these commands. Since we already are root, we don't need to do the first one, but let's continue. Always we do updates. We are going to install wget as there are other websites that have OVA file appliances that we may also want to use. After we have installed wget, we need to create a folder where we can upload our files to. So copy this command, paste and let's open that folder. Now that we've done that, we want to open FileZilla so that we can download the files or, or in our case upload the files to Proxmox. I've already set up in Site Manager a connection to Proxmox so I can just open that and then here I'm going to open the OPT folder. And in there I should find my OVA imports folder. We are now ready. I just want to mention something. When we open this page here, you will notice that they have this available in two options. There's an ISO option and there's the OVA option. Don't download this one. This is the one you need to download. So you click on that and download that. That's what we did. Let's continue. Here is our downloads folder. Here is the file that we have downloaded. Now we just right click to upload it. But if you look here, you'll see I've already uploaded it. That's all we need to do with FileZilla. So let's close it. And if we go here and we list LSLA, There it is. There's the OVA file. Now we can continue with the instructions. So this is the command we need to run tar-xvf. 
we will copy this command The OVA file is basically a zip file that wraps certain folders and things inside. In this case, it's just a container that wraps other files inside. So when we run this command, it's going to extract and we are going to get the file that we are looking for. And here is the file we are looking for. We need to remove this part of the file name, dash disk one. So all the files should look the same. And if you look here, this is the file that we want. So to do that, it's MV. Copy, paste, space, paste, and then you just go back and remove these characters. Like that. I'm not going to run this command as you have seen. I already have this file there. That's the command you need to run. And that's what we have in our instructions here. So ls dash la and these would be the files that you will have on your machine now, which I've listed over here. Notice that in this example in my documentation, I show how to install Metasploitable. If you are working with Metasploit, and you would like to have Metasploitable running on Proxmox, this is the only web page that has the instructions how to do that. Well, what we want to do, that's fine. Now we've got to go back to Proxmox, and we've got to create a new VM. No, notice I have a VM 188. I'm going to create a new one, 189. To do that, create VM, we said 189. Remember this. Let us call this GitLab. Next, I'm going to change the storage to where I have a lot of space. If you look here, I've got two terabytes available in this storage. So I'm going to use this storage. And then you click here. We don't want to use media. That's fine. And then here, we want the Quemu agent, click there, disks. So we have done these steps up to here now. Let's continue. We click next. CPU, you want one socket, it depends on your hardware and how much you want to allocate. But usually we work with one socket and we can allocate two cores or more. Memory, I always give my machines 4 gigabyte. 4 gigabyte is enough. Network, I don't make changes here. And then we can say finished. And if we look here, it's busy generating our VM. And we should have one here in 189. Now we have a few things we need to do. Click on hardware. Click on hard disk. Click on detach. And remove. And remember 189. Let's go back to our instructions now. We're now going to run these commands here. This is the command that I have saved. I 
I just want to go through it with you. QM import disk is going to import this file as a disk. This was the VM ID that we created, 189. Let me show you this. So if you have a look here, you will see that I have different storages. You, you will always have the local storage, but remember I mentioned that I have a storage with 2 terabyte, and that's ZZ user data. So that's what I'm using here, ZZ user data. That is my 2 terabyte storage. And when it imports this, it's going to create a disk, and it's going to format the disk as QCOW2. So let's run this command. Well, that was quick. We now have a 20 gig drive. Let's go back to Proxmox and let's go back to our VM 189. And now you see there's a new drive here. So we need to click here and we need to say edit. So click edit. There's nothing specific I need to do just to click add. As is, the VM won't start. Remember, VMs are like PCs where you have multiple drives. And the new drive is in the last boot order, so we will never see it. So we got to go now and select boot order. To do that, we go back to here and we look for options and we click boot order and we click edit. And you see the new drive is not even enabled. Now that we've enabled it, we can now move it above the network drive. That's all we want to do and then say OK. And now that we've done that, we should be able to start this VM. So console, start. That's a very good sign. The OS is working. Okay, a new password. Remember to give this thing a long password. I'm not going to continue with the installation as that's um, beyond the scope of this video. But as you can see, I've succeeded to install a VM from an OVA file which we downloaded from the internet. One thing you must be careful is to use VMs from a reputable source. And for that reason, we like turnkey Linux because we know these are VMs that you can trust. And as you can see, they've got a large variety of VMs that you can install on your machine. Enough said. Thank you for watching this video. Please give us a like please consider to join our channel. Over to you, Josh. Thank you for watching this video, exploring the world of appliance OVA files that we can import into Proxmox. After watching this video, we now can easily import virtual machine appliance into Proxmox. We did all this by extracting VMDK files from VirtualBox OVA files. First, we created a VM, then we removed the hard disk. Then we created a hard disk and imported the VMDK file. Finally, we got the imported VM to work in Proxmox. If you have not given us a like, please do so. Your dedication to exploring Proxmox's capabilities is invaluable. Stay tuned for more insights, automation, and empowerment through its incredible tools for your home lab. Please like and comment to share your feedback and suggestions for our channel. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials, ensuring you never miss out on informative videos. Your support is crucial for our channel's growth. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, consider becoming a Patreon supporter for exclusive access to upcoming training courses, enriching your expertise, and supporting the channel. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you.
Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing Proxmox's remarkable potential in your home lab and DevOps journey. Thank you for being part of our community.